Hello, my name is Christopher, and I would like to talk to you about what are the components of higher probability trade entries. There's a few things I look for when I'm looking at the markets on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of the instrument, or even what, regardless if I'm trading Forex, futures, ETFs, whatever the case may be. Some of the components of higher probability trade entries are actually not that difficult to differentiate and identify. First of all, one thing that I think is very smart is following short-term trends. If you look at the natural probabilities, counter-trending, breakout trading, trend following, from all the evidence I've ever seen is good old trend following has a much higher natural probability, regardless of time frame or just if you differentiate between the different styles of trading, trend following standalone is a higher probability style of trading. And the reason is, is you're following the flow of money. I call it path of least resistance trading. You're following trends, not fighting them. You're working with or in alignment with smart money, not against it. So that's one component is trying to move more of your intraday trading into the realm of trend following. A second thing is paying attention to price momentum having your trades in alignment with current reading price momentum. Now there are a lot of indicators out there, some lag terribly, some are more responsive. I like a hybrid price momentum tool, something that's very responsive to price action. Uh, some traders like more oscillator type indicators. I just like good old price momentum in indicators. I want to know what the price momentum is doing on the short term time frame basis. Another component of trading higher probability setups is paying attention to where there's higher pivot lows and lower pivot highs. Again, some of the core items that I like to focus on on an intraday basis for targeting higher probability trade setups is I try to follow trends, I pay attention to and I try to stay in alignment with price momentum, and I also pay attention to cycling higher pivot lows or cycling lower pivot highs. So let's take a look at an example. I do have the market had a period of a, a sell-off. This is the CL contract or crude oil. The market traded down. We see the market started to have a directional change and started to put in some higher pivot lows. So the momentum tool I'm noticing leading up to this directional change, I am showing a divergence building. So a lot of traders like to get in here and mix it up right in the divergence, trying to guess when this market's going to bounce. So they see the initial divergence and the market's lifting a little bit and a lot of newer developing traders that don't understand price action yet they're in there trying to buy those bounces and you know what happens it's you know you're picking a bottom you've just bought a market that's just made a lower pivot low you're in here you buy and then the market reverses on you and the trader comes back in again they see the market bouncing again and they take another shot at it we have a secondary divergence and they come in here and buy it again. As Soon as they get in, the market bounces a little bit, the market pulls back, and they get freaked out, and they go ahead on this trade, and they jump out at break even, plus a tick or two, down a tick or two. So it's kind of like they're chasing their tail, and then all of a sudden the market takes off, and they're left there staring at the screen. I'm not a big advocate of diving into the market as the divergence is playing out. What I like to do is get into the market action of if I truly get a transition and a directional price action, you know, well over 90% of the time, I'm going to start getting some higher pivot lows. That's where I would like to get in. What I like to do is I like to wait till the price action or the price momentum tool is telling me that I'm now starting to make a transition from dissipating negative price momentum to shifting positive price momentum. I call this the transition, crossing the zero line. Once I've had the transition, then I like to find a long setup into higher pivot lows. I'm a huge fan of Renko's. It's the only style of candlestick. It's a non time frame based candlestick where every candlestick body is an equal number of ticks. The high to low uh, range of each candlestick can vary slightly, but at least each body of the candlestick is they're all identical. So here I have first set of higher pivot low. The market cycles, pulls back secondary higher pivot low, and then I get a long setup, and here I have positive price momentum showing at the time. 
I'm not diving in trying to get long in the market in this area where I have negative price momentum still registering on my hybrid momentum tool, but I'm getting in here after I have evidence that there's been a transition and now some positive price momentum. I'm going long into higher pivot lows into a what I call trend formation area. I'm not into a running trend yet, but I'm into the beginnings of a trend formation a cycling of higher pivot lows, higher pivot highs. That's the area, in my opinion, that is the higher probability area if I wanted to get long in the CO market on this particular trading day. And for final review, let's just take a quick look at what these three core elements that I focus on during the intraday period when I'm looking to target the highest probability setups each day in whatever instrument I'm trading Number one, follow those trends. Stop fighting trends. Fighting trends is a lower probability style of trading. Second thing, alignment with price momentum. Going long when you have upside price momentum, look for short setups when you have downside price momentum. Makes a huge difference in your weekly PL. Third thing is try to work trades into higher pivot lows when you're going long or lower pivot highs when you're going short. Price cycling higher and holding price levels as it's stair stepping up means something. It means that higher and higher prices are accepted and that slight pullbacks are being bought and being supported. Just the opposite on downside trading. As the market's selling off and kickbacks against that trend, sellers are coming in and, and holding that price level lower and lower as, as price is cycling lower. So always pay attention to higher pivot lows, lower pivot highs. And that's another reason why I like using Renko charts. It's very easy to visually identify where we have higher pivot lows and lower pivot highs in various price movements. So in your own trading, if you just focus on these three things, take a look at your overall trade plan and, and see how you can incorporate this into your own trading, I think you'll find it'll have a very positive impact on your weekly, monthly, and yearly overall P&L.